if anyone else pops in, we'll add them in, but we may as well get started. Thanks so much for joining us, Paul. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you here. Pleasure um, to be here. So far throughout our sessions, we've had a great amount of people, but we haven't had anyone that does vocal writing, top liner uh, before, so it's really exciting for us. Um, for anyone that might not know a bit about you, did you want to give us a bit of background on what you do? Um, yeah, uh, I'm uh, essentially a songwriter um, and uh, vocal producer. Um, and um, I, uh, I got into the industry by creating an app. I didn't really write a hit for Guy Sebastian or Jessica Narbo or anything like that, but although that would have been nice. Um, <laughs> we created an app uh, and Triple J that we released an album, Triple J picked it up and um, and really supported it. And on um, the strength of that, we got a major recording, uh, record signing to Sony. So that's how I got into the business and kind of I've been pretty much songwriting and working with artists and vocalists ever since. So i um, kind of gone full circle now and I'm back into the artist development because um, I really love top lining, I always will. Um, but I've, I, I've missed the seeing and being involved from a project from start to finish uh, and seeing it through past the release stage as well. Sometimes top lining, you know, your involvement is on a collaborative level and that's great as well, you know. But I really miss kind of uh, being hands on and navigating the project. So, yeah, our vocal production, songwriting, top lining, and artist development. Can I answer your question, mate? <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't actually know the answer to this, although I pretend to do, pretend I do. There's so much lingo and uh, different words for things. What is the difference between a writer and a top liner then, or a, uh, a, a vocal writer and a top liner? I, I just think top liner is a fancy <laughs> name for songwriter, you know I mean? Yeah, writer, it's just like the same thing, is it? Or? <laughs> it well, top lining pretty much involves lyrical and, mel and, and melodic component, uh, whereas uh, usually someone else is supplying the music. Whereas yeah. a lot of songwriters would just come up with the chords and uh, and do the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, which I love too. I actually feel my best songs are the ones I come up from scratch. But uh, but yeah, um, I love collaborating as well. So yeah. Yeah. Right. So what you would call like love addict, the the work you did in that would be like a top lining uh, job, and then the, some of the stuff you've sent me that you're going to put out on your your label that's going to be coming up. That would be like where you've written the full track plus on the top line, and that's like a that's writing plus top lining kind of thing. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, Love Addict, I actually came up with uh, the chords that we wrote the, the top line to. Yeah. Uh, and um, so that was kind of a songwriting thing. And then I, I gave it to some guy called Pillow uh, and uh, he did some amazing things with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that's a perfect example. You know, sometimes you can have a, a top line. Uh, that you write specifically for a piece of music. Uh, other times there's a, a vocal sitting there waiting for the right person and the right producer to come along. And um, I'm, I'm very much in that uh, mindset that uh, I've got a lot of tracks that I haven't released yet. It, I just feel, you know, you know when, uh, you know, vocals, uh, yeah. you know when the right vocal meets the right person. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we were chatting the other day on the phone and you've got a couple of young artists that you are developing and you, you mentioned that even some of them are like in different parts of Australia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I've um, kind of gravitated back to, to uh, I love developing artists. It's a, it's a space I feel I can shine in. So um, I've got uh, artists in, uh, in WA, in Perth, uh, in Queensland and Melbourne and Sydney. Um, so unfortunately, um, obviously, because of the uh, current situation, uh, the, uh, the you know the artists in WA and Queensland or Melbourne really can't come here and record. Um, so we kind of uh, devised a really cool way, uh, which came about through one of the writing camps my my publisher put through, and uh, they brought it to my attention. A uh, 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 audio movers VST called Listen to. Uh, have, you heard, yeah. have, you, have you heard about that? No, I think Klaus might use it when he's doing his. Um, production classes with people. Is it like, yeah, explain it to me. Is it's it a, a website plugin. or something? Yeah, it's a, it, it's a plugin. So just you just uh, put it into your chain depending on uh, on what you're doing. Uh, so basically my artist in Perth, um, we've got to set up with the right kind of gear. And, you know, it doesn't mean to take it cost a fortune just to set up to kind of, you know, record vocals. Uh, but you just need the right kind of stuff. And so she sings in Perth. 
and I press record here, and it comes and, and it records uh, what you're doing, you know. So yeah. it kind of it kind of relieves the sending stems, and it's a, it's a lot more uh, immediate, you know. Yeah. Um, wow. So is that something that you would have done pre-COVID, or is that just completely? Is this kind of situation completely changed how you're approaching things? Like to an extent, yeah. I mean, uh, nothing beats having the singer here. And yeah. Working, you know. Um, also, the vocal the, uh, producer and me, you know, uh, you know, you spend a bit of money on gear and stuff. I've I got, got a cool preamp and a cool mic, so I kind of know, you know, uh, what what the sound is going to be of the vocal. And I always say, a good vocal is not necessarily a, a great chain, but if you've got the right kind of gear, gear going into it, you really don't need to treat it as much on the other side, you know. Um, but yeah, I struggled with that. But um, you know, there were some really good mics that were affordable that did, that do the job as well. So. Yeah. So, at what level of microphone do you need to look at a preamp? Because I've like I've got what have I got? Um, I've got the Rode NT One A. That's just kind of a basic thing. I just was going to haven't set it up yet because I'm still building the studio. But that you would you wouldn't get a preamp for something like that, would you? It's kind of the next level up. Oh, look, the interface is today a really, a really good. I'll, I'll um kind of write it down because uh, I've got a few of my artists to kind of. Uh, uh, just to invest in these and um, like a, a basic focus right Scarlett solo interface, right? Yeah, $229. No, um, um, and uh, mic wise, um, what is it? Uh, a, a condenser mic, yeah. Um, uh, so if you've got a good enough kind of sound card, you might not need a preamp. Probably, yeah, I mean, uh, I've got the, I've got my me, and I've got the, some of us. Yes, uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the cards have got really good plans as well. Um, there's a good condenser mic you can get for eight hundred dollars. I think it's a, uh, I'll find out. Um, and um, yeah, it won't cost you earth. If, if you want to invest that eight hundred dollars, you can get a decent mic that you could record something that that's potentially releasable. You know? Yeah. But is that, 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 Sometimes a lot of singers sometimes record at home, and uh, the, you know the mics they're using are not great, and uh, half the time it's not usable. Sometimes uh, I get sent stuff to try and fix it up, and I, I put it through my valve preamp and stuff, and just try and clean it up. The problem with that is the artifacts that get recorded. When yeah. You them, the artifacts get louder as well. So you know, um, there's a few tricks around that, but uh, if you can if you can get a, a decent mic. You're saving everyone, including the stuff, especially the stuff, a lot of trouble. So, the, and I'm assuming like the room you're recording in is just just as important as um as the mic. Like, have you got some of these artists at home recording in their cupboards or under <laughs> under a blanket? Or <laughs> if, I, if you can get a carpeted room, that would be ideal. But what I because I'm I've moved into a new studio uh, uh, premise premises, so uh, I'm I'm building a vocal booth at the end of the month. So I'm still recording. So I actually got an Aston Halo. Have you heard of those? No, what's that? Uh, it's kind of like a, um, uh, I'll show you. Um, yeah, sure. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So it really does cut out a lot of reverb. Um, yeah, wow. How much is something like that? Uh, yeah, it's under 400. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of affordable stuff that's not going to cost you. I mean, for $1,500, if you've already got a MacBook Pro or a laptop or something like that, if you spend an extra $1,500, you can get yourself decently set up. You know? Yeah, I, I guess a lot of people right now are probably at home, not really, especially if they're in stage four Victoria, like they can't do much. They can't go to a studio. So that at the moment, they need to set stuff up at home. So I think like, just the little tactics and, and ways to, to record at home are super useful. I have heard some hilarious stories. I know Casper was telling me one of the vocalists he was working with, she would jump into a cupboard to record. <laughs> She'd literally go into the cupboard with her microphone and sing in there. And apparently that works. So if you, if you don't have 400 bucks. <laughs> well, true. I mean, I did, I did that in the early days. I would, I, I'd uh, just uh, have the closet and open the doors and I'd have a doona around it, you know? Wow. Um, it does a job. I think Don, didn't Don Dollar record uh, um, under his blanket? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ta ta take it. 
Um, yeah. Well, apparently, yeah, I was chatting to him at the airport. We're having a beer. Um, and he, he was telling me that he recorded it under there as the draft vocal, but then every time he recorded it again, because it's, it's his voice, right? Uh, every time he recorded it again, he could never get it sounding better. So do you have an exp experience of that with, with maybe some top liners or, or um, some vocalists that uh, like recording on a potato is kind of what you want? Or is it like... <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. Um, it's sometimes hard to recreate the vibe. Um, yeah. Or you might record a chorus and a, and a first verse and then you come back and you have to record the second verse. And just the vocal sound is just not, you know, it's a bit of a struggle, you know. Um, I think it's to do with just being in a relaxed environment. I find with the remote recording, it, the writing and the vocal recording actually is probably a bit easier because people are in their own element. So they, it's not as formal as being in someone else's studio, I guess, you know? Yeah, um, right. So uh, that seems to kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it, the, the writing aspects of it, it, it really works well with that. Do you find that maybe if you've got kind of like um, a vocalist in and you've got more time, like a, a longer session and there's less pressure like on the clock that you get better results? Or do you have like, I guess if you're booking out time in a studio, you've only got a certain amount of time, right? Um, just in when life's back to normal kind of thing. It, dep it depends on, on what, uh, what the project for the day is. If it's an artist development situation, we basically write uh, and record a lead Kind of international caliber vocal as we're going along because that's how it is in the real world you know yeah um, if you've got a session with someone and uh usually you don't know if you're going to kind of uh have the opportunity to be there again or if you're from overseas or something you want to make you know uh that recording and the day's efforts count so if it's someone that's really kind of experienced and, and versed in what they do there's no reason why you can't write and record a, a lead vocal in, in, in that one day yeah uh, but if it's more someone that's kind of learning the ropes and stuff, from my perspective, you know, you just got to give it a bit of patience and just let them develop. And uh, at the end of the day, I feel that's the best way to learn in terms of uh, if you're a singer or a songwriter, just to, to be in the studio with guys like us and kind of write a song. Do you know what I mean? And that uh, the thing is with me, I'm, I'm kind of a and ring it as I'm writing it. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but you, know, <laughs> you try to, you try to, you try to, you know, maximize and everything that you try to do. Obviously, you want it to be a single, but it's not always going to go that way. You know? Yeah. So you've got your own label coming up and you're doing all these different roles. Do you put on like a different hat when you're kind of in each role? Like if you're in songwriting mode, do you kind of have a different perspective than you go into A&R mode later on or? Yeah, well, you know, you, you, you know about that, won't you? <laughs> um, yeah, I just do it all at once. <laughs> yeah, you've got to separate yourself from it though. You know, yeah. it's actually... Uh, Sometimes because you're involved artistically, it's hard to kind of detach from it yeah. uh, and look at it as objectively as an A&R guy or a label guy needs to, especially if you're going to invest money into it, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's why it's good to have label partners. So yeah. to give you the reality check when, uh, I just sent it to Klaus and let him rip me apart. <laughs> <laughs> He's the A&R. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, yeah, it is, it is a bit difficult. Um, what, what kind of process do you have when you are kind of just in that writing mode? Do you have like any rituals you do pre-writing or is it just kind of like you just get straight into it? Uh, I like to immerse myself in the kind of this vibe that, um, that the artist, that, I, you know, that I've uh, heard them do or what kind of, you know, genre we're trying to uh, kind of achieve. So I find if, if I just have the music on in the background, you just kind of absorb it, you know, and uh, it just puts you in a mode because, I mean, the great thing of what, what, I, what I do is I could write a, you know, um, a house track and then do a, a top track and then do an EDM track, you know, and stuff. And uh, it kind of keeps me... Um, keeps me kind of uh, fresh in that respect so because i'm not the singer i don't have release i don't have to worry about release fatigue i can write as much and yeah. as much as i can as i want to because uh it's not my name yeah singer. you know what i mean you do I'm do a fun. bit of demo tracking though don't you i think i've heard your voice on a couple oh, of <laughs> <laughs> is that something that's important if, if you're kind of writing something to convey like how do you get your message across sometimes to the vocalist, there's so much different lingo that you can use. Like if you want a specific style 
out of someone is it better to record say a, a demo vocal for them and you know do it like this but with a bit more you know volume. i actually sing it to the mic like yeah. I, I, I try not to have any evidence of my singing recorded <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if i can avoid it um but um yeah i'd sing it to them and then we just flesh out i think with the top lining thing um when you get a vocalist in it's like uh you're creating a character uh, especially if it's not um, their preferred genre of choice, by like saying if, you, if, if, if you're getting someone that uh, does a lot of live work, uh, often it's a struggle with dance music because when you sing live, you, you know, timing is not as much of an issue as, uh, but when you're doing dance music, that beat, that four on the floor is just going and you've got to keep up and you've got to click into the track. So I find probably 80% of vocalists struggle with timing. Yeah. Uh, um, is that just on dance tracks or is that like... Just... Uh, well, I, th I, I think so because I think probably yeah. in the R&B track, it's easier to be more chill than behind the beat and you can get away with it a bit more maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but... Um, it, the drumming's usually a bit more like loose as well in those yeah, kind of tracks, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So um, a, a lot of them struggle, most of them struggle with timing. And, and it's just, sometimes it's really hard for them because it's a real, uh, the phrasing, is foreign to them so it takes a lot of goes to kind of you know get it right you know which vocalists have you found that work kind of best with dance and house do you find that people that are kind of more experienced with electronic dance music or do you like getting someone that's from a different background that's an interesting question Chris. um i um someone who's really trained could probably have more more challenging to find it a lot more challenging if they haven't done that kind of stuff. Um, I find sometimes I have to deprogram some singers in terms of like uh, you know live you can cheat and you can get away with it. You know, um, yeah. if you sing if you're singing behind the beat, it's not really about that when you're live. It's about connecting with an audience. Uh, yeah. And sometimes you can hit hit a bum note or or the phrasing's not right, and it doesn't matter because it's part of the performance. But in the studio, that mic is right there. So yeah. you need to access lay, different light and, light and shades in your voice um, that you might that you wouldn't do live. You know, so um, I think maybe someone who's well experienced in the genre probably would you know would be easier to kind of work with. But yeah. you know, I, I, I enjoy all aspects of that. I like the challenge, and I actually I actually love taking someone that hasn't done this kind of stuff before, and then suddenly you create something that's bigger than them and uh, and uh, everyone's everyone's happy, you know? <laughs> yeah, 100%. And I remember like in the past, we've spoken about some of the top lines you've done for our color cast of tunes and you've, you've had vocalists come in and you pushed them so hard, they had to have like a, a, a break for a couple of days. Can you explain something like that and, and like the methods to get someone to do maybe more than what they used to be doing? Well, I think if you're talking with the diva kind of stuff. Yeah. It, 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 it really is, uh, you know, it, it can be as hard or as easy as you make it. If it's not, if you're not used to it, um, it's not about intensity per se, but it's about light and shade and character. Uh, I find some of the best singers in that, in that genre, when you're hearing them sing, they don't sound like they're belting it. But then when you hear the playback, it's like, whoa, you know? Um, so, um, when you're constantly up there and you need to nail it, sometimes, uh, you know, something is made and you've got to read the situation. You don't want anyone to, to damage their vocal cords uh, or damage themselves. So, <laughs> so you've got to kind of pre allocate You can tell because of the, uh, their tonality starts losing definition. Yeah. Uh, so when that starts happening, we call it and then uh, continue it another day, you know. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely, I think that's um, quite a rare thing these days to find those those diva voices or like we experienced with that um, love addict, Yolanda, she, that was the last dance track I think she's ever done because uh, for one reason or another, she kind of got over electronic music. She, well, she, she, I don't know if you've heard her album. She does, no, I saw uh, she was like a new, one of the up and coming artists for the Grammys or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think she got nominated, uh, Americana. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, yeah. uh, she's probably one of the best vocalists I've ever worked with. And uh, what's it what's it like working with someone like that? Like, because that was in the UK, right? Was that before a a ADE or something like that? Or uh, that was, uh, I think, before after ADE. I, I did a writing trip in the UK and I went to Bristol. 
And um, yeah, my, uh, well, he's become a, a really good mate now. And Nathaniel Lewis is that he was managing uh, Yolanda at the time, Yola at the time, and um, he uh, organized a, a meet and we got along really well. And so, she oh. came to the studio and uh, basically, um, did three takes of Love Addict, I think. <laughs> Well, it was called something different back then, wasn't it? It was called something different. That's another example. I mean, uh, you know, no, I can't remember what it was called. Neither can I. You're good with the titles, though. You've done that yeah. before. Yeah. I, I kind of, I, I, I dug it. I dug it. Um, and that's the that, that's the thing about the collab, the collaboration aspect of it. Um, you might. Yeah, I guess people who haven't heard. There's that you can listen to that track, and there's about four more minutes of her going like the craziest vocals I've ever heard. Like she just went for it, didn't hold back at all. Before this, uh, she started going, uh, singing, she goes, um, can you come here? And uh, she got me to press on her clavicle and to really like press really hard because she just goes for it. Like <laughs> when she, she gets really animated and she's got a kind of, um, um, you know, yep. I'm sure she doesn't injure herself in that way. This <laughs> But it was like that was. I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> it was one of the most easiest vocal. I didn't really need to vocally produce it to be honest. It's just well, like record and, and in awe, you know. Uh, so you anyway, it is a pity you don't do dance music as much anymore. But uh, hopefully you never say. Oh, you know? I definitely want her on another track. <laughs> yeah. um, and what do you, if any, like young producers that are trying to, you know, maybe they've got their top line written and they're trying to get in contact with vocalists, like. You, so you got in contact with her through her manager, you've got a publisher, like what are the kind of ways that you can get in touch with some of these artists? Um, if, uh, in this day and age, um, I just think it's like anything, networking, reaching out, um, cold calling really works in my experience, but- What's that again, sorry? Cold calling, when you don't know someone personally or they, they um, you know, um, you don't, no one introduces you and you just email them out of the blue. You know? Yeah, that you reckon that, that's, that's good? Yeah, right, okay. Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, uh, what, what's the worst they're gonna say? No, yeah. they will not reply to you. So, you know, I guess it's worth pursuing. Um, yeah, 100%. I think look, with anything, just build your brand, you know? Um, if you wanna work with this color of a singer, maybe if you're starting out, they may not be, they may not kind of be accessible to you, you know? so. Make, work what you can, what is accessible, and try and, and, and build it to a level that um, you know it can it can connect in some capacity. Uh, I always say try and work with someone that can add value to what you're doing. And you both add value to what each other's doing. You know, um, so you know um, we all love to work with. You know, we have our dream vocalists, and you know whether that's realistic at, at, at a particular stage in your career or not, just keep going, you know? Um, you yeah. might find if you record this track with someone, uh, it, 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 it makes an impact, it connects on a certain level, and so other people will want to work with you in the future, you know? Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, in this business also, people, people listen, but obviously uh, you're judged on your success as well, as, uh, yeah. as, uh, as well as your talent, you know? which is not necessarily, I'm not here to say whether that's right or wrong, but uh, you know, the more you can achieve, the more you can build your brand, um, the easier it will be to connect with, with different people in the future. I guess people want to know that they're going to get something for their, their time. It's hard to get paid in the industry. So you can tell why people kind of want to know that you're a, like uh, going to finish the track. <laughs> you know, if you've got a lot of six string of successful releases. They know that you're a finisher, that you get stuff done. We spoke to Gabby last week and she's like, finish tracks. Just stop sending me, uh, you know, half done stuff, finish your tracks, which is well, exactly. I think, true. If, I think if you're not finishing your tracks, you're saying uh, sublim subliminally, you're saying, uh, I don't know whether this is worth finishing or not. So yeah. I need you to tell me whether this has value. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. if, you, if you finish a track and you, and you approach a label, it's done. Um, it's saying, I'm on this trip with or without you. This, this train is moving forward. You know what I mean? So that, that projects a certain amount of confidence as well, which is what people want to see, you know? Um, so if, if, if you're saying to someone, I need you to kind of make me successful, people might <laughs> kind of, you know, uh, not, uh, not, get, not uh, be enthusiastic, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, tell us a little bit more about like 
you, you, you spoke about riders' camps before. Is is that where the Setmo track came about, or am I making that up? No, no, that's right. That, that's, yeah, okay, uh, that is true. That is true. Uh, funnily enough, uh, I had met Setmo a few months earlier. We went out to dinner with Gabby and Anne uh, at Global, yeah. and, uh, and we got along famously. So I was actually really looking forward uh, to kind of working with them. Um, and uh, they teamed us up with Woods as well. And the first thing Stuart says uh, when we got into the studio was, uh, you know, not every track we, we do has to be a, a banger, you know, just, uh, <laughs> it, just do something really kind of cool and eclectic and it doesn't have to be a single or a banger, you know. Uh, yeah. And it turned out to be I Belong Here, which is, a, which is amazing. And uh, it, was, it was one of the most uh, enjoyable sessions I've ever had. Actually. And so is that something that, how did you get involved with the writing camp? Is that through 301 or your publishing or both? No, that was through my publisher. That was a 120, yep. 120 publishing organised. It was, it was at 301. Yep. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, it was probably been my most successful collab at a writing camp. We got, we got a gold record out, which is amazing. Um, and uh, but with writing camps, it's very hit and miss. You know, yep. you, you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, but like anything in this business, you, you've got to be in it to win it, you know? What, what level of a kind of a music producer or a writer or a vocalist would you want to be at when you want to start kind of going to or trying to attend writing camps? Is that just for beginners or is it more advanced? Um, I wouldn't say that. I just feel if you're a producer, if you have, uh, you know, if you can play different kind of chords on the keyboard or a guitar or something like that, um, there's that kind of, kind of, uh, uh, collaboration. That, More like uh, jamming sort of you thing? Could, you could jam, you want to think of these chords or and, 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 and if you're not that guy that's cool too because you could probably prepare a whole heap of m music or ideas that you can play to people and so yeah. and often enough, I, I like to kind of do both but I, I, I like to have a fail safe because you know the worst thing is being in the studio and having to start something from scratch sometimes it's, it can be quite uh, <laughs> challenging or if you're just playing chords it can, can it can come out quite ballady because you're just doing chords you know what i mean yeah. so uh, i like to think uh, like with the last few writing camps i like to set out some goals of what are, what, what are we trying to achieve here we're going to write a top line to pitch to an international artist uh or are we going to do uh a, a, an artist track to, you know for their for their own project it's important to have those kind of um uh, gold and mine when we're doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, cool. And and obviously that's kind of all on hold until the world gets back to normal. You won't see a writing, writing camp for a while. Well, not really. We had a writing camp, a virtual writing camp with 120 uh, a few months ago. Uh, and it was all through uh, the remote done. And we actually got some really good stuff. Yeah, right. Uh, cool. Is that just via Zoom or something? Sorry? Is that just via like Zoom or? It was with Zoom and that uh, listen to. Uh, oh, cool. Listen yeah. to. I'll have to check that out. Awesome. Yeah. No, it's really cool. It's really good. So, uh, uh, no, we've got some really good stuff, I think. So, um, so I never, yeah, the technology's there. Can you imagine going through this pandemic if we didn't have the internet? Yeah. Hey, I've had a blackout. I've had uh, no internet. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. <laughs> not for more than a few, not, not for more than 24 hours. Um, but, and um, so did you predict that um, the track that I belong here would kind of, what did it end up doing? It sold like, um, what did it end up selling? It was like, uh, in Australia, I think, it was. I checked, I think it's almost 18 million spins or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I Triple J really got behind it as well. Yeah. Um, uh, look, I, I really vibed on the track. I kind of, I, I, I kind of, you know, and more often than not, you know, you get a sense of the special tracks. You know? Yeah. So um, you can kind of feel that when you're working on something, you're like, oh, shit, we've got a, we've got a winner here. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, you know, I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I, I really vibed on it. I loved Woods. I loved working with her as well. Um, but the thing is, we didn't hear anything about the track for two years. Oh, wow. Um, after the writing, I think, because I think the track was released 2017 or 2018. Not um, but I remember seeing uh, the boys, I uh, went to uh, record at Crown Street in, uh, uh, yeah. tomorrow. And I uh, went for a coffee and I ran into the boys and I hadn't seen them for... Wait, was I there that day? <laughs> Maybe. I think I was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I was. was that With Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and he said, oh, our track's coming out next week. 
Uh, I said, you're not yeah, fucking true. Idiot. They're coming out next week. And they put so much time and work into that. So um, um, when I heard it, I, I was blown away. So uh, I was really, and it was their first independent release as well. So it was just a, yeah. a good take on very, uh, on, on a lot of different factors. So uh, I'm, I'm glad it worked out for everyone. That's kind of a common theme between, I guess, you, me, them, and a lot of other people we know to the starting their own labels and imprints. You know, like, I guess you, you kind of want to have a few releases under your belt and be quite sure of yourself before you take that next level. Yeah. What's but, your opinion on that? I, I, what what I, I, made I, you start it? But the label? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think Because you, like, you haven't released yet, have you? I haven't released anything yet. I've been, I've been yeah. cultivating material for the last 12 months. Uh, yeah. And um, and because I'm producing some of it as well, it, well, most of it, it's just it, at the production time, I'm a better songwriter than I am a producer. <laughs> so I can yeah. write a song quicker than I can produce it, but uh, I'm, I'm working with different people as well. So I just want to be sure uh, what goes out. I want a good release, not a quick release, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, so we've just been building because a lot of the acts are artist focused. Um, so that takes time. You know, uh, and, and what, what kind of push did you do that then? Do you think, like, you know, what made you did you want just more control over the releases, or is it just something that you just want to know a bit more about how to do it all? Or, um, I it, not so much, you know, I, I wanted to, um, ex, you know, just navigate through the whole thing from start to finish with the artist. Yeah. So it seemed to be a natural progression from the artist development yeah. because. You kind of invest and work with artists for months, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, like over 12 months. And you want more than just to, okay, here's a star, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> you know? you're, kind of, you're kind of doing all that. You're invested in it. And then you're, you're handballing them to sort of someone else. Well, you're invested in it, uh, both creatively yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and emotionally, and you want to see it work. So, um, and also, I mean, I've, I've worked with so many labels here. Uh, and I've made such amazing friends in labels here. Um, yeah. I, 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 and I, I feel where I'm at, though. I really want to kind of give international a go, uh, a, a, a more focused kind of um, approach. Um, and it's tough. It's tougher. But, uh, you know, um, something I feel strongly about. So, yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let's talk in 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Corona's over. Yeah, um, and we, so I guess a lot of people uh, obviously can, can know that they can come, they can come towards you with a um, an instrumental and maybe like a, a vocal draft, and they can ask for your services. Um, you know, obviously that's something we've done in the past, and we'll, we'll have a little link to what, what do you how do you prefer to be contacted? Um, my email. Um, yeah. I, I, I think look with the top lining thing. It's really more about connecting with the music and with the artists for me. Yeah. Um, just uh, because, you know, a lot of, uh, I get a lot of, you know, requ requests for top lines and you, and you look at it and uh, the artists are sometimes are starting out. And I, I, I don't let that uh, put me off because someone took a, uh, a chance on me once and I had done, and, and I owe my career to them. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I know that, uh, especially with dance music, um, we're all underdogs until we're not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and conceivably, one of the things I love about crossover dance music is that it's not impossible from the day that you write it or finish it, six months down the track, you, it's not impossible that you could have a, a global hit on your hands, you know? Yeah. Um, whereas with something that's a, a more artist-driven, pop or rock, it, it, it's a lot more involved, you know? Yeah, uh, you've got to cultivate a, 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 a repertoire, um, build your brand, connect with an uh, with, with an audience. I mean, there's that aspect of dance music as well, but you know, um, you just never know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so, I mean, so um, just... yeah, I, I like to kind of uh, to me if, if if it's something that um, that uh, I feel I can take to the next level, and I'm really kind of vibing on it, I'll consider it. Um, but sometimes I'm not the guy for it, you know, and I may... Oh, so it's just kind of like that honest conversation, whether it's, 
Because, like, I guess if so, if someone comes to you and says, you know, this is going to be focused with Triple J, this is the sort of vocalist, you can kind of gauge whether you want to do it or not, or whether it's going to kind of work, or whether you've got the right vocalist for the job. That's right, and and, and you know, it's it's time and uh, uh, and uh, that you're putting into it, and you're you're kind of engaging vocalists as well and stuff. So. Um, do you prefer having that direction? Like, do you prefer someone saying, like, <laughs> we're aiming for j triple jabby, we're, like, these are the bands, or, like, this is the electronic music we like, uh, artists we like, you know, that's the whole vibe is focusing on triple J. Do you prefer someone kind of having that avenue and telling you that, or did you prefer someone to let you just go take that instrumental and just do whatever you see fit? No, I, I prefer uh, as much of a brief as possible. And I try, like I always ask, uh, who, who's out there right now that you would align yourself artistically with that you feel uh, you're in the same universe as, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, and, and I always ask them, what's your plan? And yeah. And if, I, if, I, if they say, well, I want to release it and see how it goes, that's not a plan. That's a mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so um, you know, do you have a, a management involved? Do you have a label involved? And if they don't, that's not that, that's not a deal breaker either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, it's more like, is there an, is there potential for this? And and that's where kind of it bleeds into A and Ring or artist development sometimes. And uh, I think top line top mining is a great way to kind of introduce collaborations and, and people working together because you get an idea of if you gel with someone you don't want to work with someone that you don't gel with you know i feel like top lining or vocal writing is like the scariest part of production if you're the one writing the lyrics like you know there's no dumb lyrics and there's no kind of like wrong writing but how do you get over that initial confidence of like what I've written is good enough for people to listen to because it's quite kind of like it's you're in a thoughts right or it's like you know Part, it, kind of a part of you. It took me. It took me a few years to get my head around lyrics to be confident with lyrics. Yeah, and I, I, I'm kind of at a place now where it's just intuitive. If I kind yeah. of, I, I kind of just know. If it, and I think a lot of writers are like that. Um, you kind of know if it works or if it doesn't. And for me, the best gauge, I always say, the right lyric is when you write it. Nothing else could be in its place. And if you're listening to your record and you're saying, could that lyric be better? Then it probably can, because if it was the right lyric, you wouldn't be asking that question. Yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with like, maybe if you're working with someone, you come up with something that you really like and you think, oh, that's sick. And they're just like, no, that's, that's shit. Or like, if they don't like it, you know, that how do you deal with like, I, I, That's cool because sometimes something could be great, <laughs> but it might not be the kind of great they're looking for. So yeah. um, you just pitch, uh, my, my, my thing is we make very clear that um, if we can't, if I come up with something and they're not digging it, uh, but I, I wouldn't present you something that I wasn't into myself. Um, yeah. If, if you weren't into it or it didn't fit with your project, that's cool. As long as I'm free to pitch it elsewhere, yeah, um, I'm happy with that because that's time well invested. And more often than not, uh, we've actually pitched it to bigger artists that have taken it. You know what I mean? So. It, it, it really works well. Uh, so I just. So you've got that. kind of like a, uh, like a silver linings kind of thought process to it. So it's not you don't get kind of butt hurt, or you've got quite a big, big, a thick skin. It's like, well, if it doesn't work for you, I'll just use it for someone else. Well, yeah, it's and it's not it's not from the place of ego. It's just more trusting your gut. Yeah. Uh, if, if, yeah. If it doesn't fit, if it doesn't fit this 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 artist, uh, I'm sure, I'm pretty confident we'll find someone else for it. You know. So yeah, cool. Do you have just like a, a journal or something just full of lyrics? Is it uh, like that? I, I have a journal. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I have a journal full of lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't journal. You just you, you just put everything into your phone. Do you, do I do. I just record book, voice phone. notes or yeah. Wow. Notes. notes. Uh, well, maybe, yeah. Just mainly. Uh, so I'm big on titles. I feel. Uh, song yeah. title. I think obviously the chorus is the destination for me uh, for the, of the song. And so if I have a if I have a chorus title that I feel, or a song title that I am really vibed on, it helps me plan out the song a lot easier. So, um, so yeah, yeah um, I'm big on lyrics. Yeah. Is that like trying to kind of paint a picture or tell a, like tell a story? Well, well yeah. Uh, it, 
I, I always like it, the type the kind of song title that uh, you listen, you, you, you read and think, oh, I want to hear how that actually works because that's a really cool title. But that's actually backfired on yeah. me as well because I, uh, I remember um, when I was overseas, I had a meeting with a, with a manager um, of uh, a, 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 an artist over there. Um, and he said, look, your stuff is really good, but I look at your song titles and as a non-English speaker, <laughs> I don't get it, you know? Ah, so simpler is better? Yeah, well, it depends what what you want. And yeah. I guess, you know, some artists don't like to kind of break it down into demographics, but if you're thinking of, of wanting to write a song that appeals on a global level, that was something I never considered because I, you know, yeah. um, I, as English speaking writers, especially in Australia, we tend to be clever with our lyrics and sometimes too clever maybe. <laughs> you know yeah right uh, and uh and, and he goes i just want to hear a, uh, i just want to hear a song like let me love you you know and stuff yeah. and, <laughs> and i'm thinking my immediate thing is oh you want me to dumb down my lyrics but i thought no actually i get what he's saying it's uh the english if english is not your first language sometimes you yeah. get that in your head you know and so like how do you find like i guess actually george has got a question in here as well and it kind of like makes sense with what I'm about to ask you guys. If you've written a whole stack of different genres, which st uh, style do you prefer? And is there anything you won't touch? And then my kind of thing is like, if people are asking you to dumb stuff down or make a certain type of pop, are you against that or are you for it? Um, dumb down? Um, I think- Or like, is there like, you know how like we're playing a DJ set and someone will request like a song that you just don't want to play? <laughs> is there like the same sort of vibes when it comes to writing? Is there any styles you won't touch? Country? <laughs> no, no, I, look, I, uh, I struggled with um, Bounce, Melbourne Bounce. Uh, yeah. And I really struggled with that because uh, in its, when it was really massive, um, I think if you go too far right, it's too cheesy with the vocal. And if you go too yeah. far left, it's too sophisticated uh, lyrically for the audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was a really fine line. And that's why a lot of rap kind of stuff really worked with that genre because also sometimes it's hard to write a melody over the bass line when you don't have chords, you know? Yeah, so yeah I, the I bass line's kind of one note. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really kind of, that, that, was, uh, that was a real struggle for me to kind of, um, that genre to nail. Uh, I love house. I mean, at my core, house music has always been, uh, you know, um, and really uh, what I love. Um, yeah. It's funny though, I can write songs now, whereas when I was, you know, uh, in the 90s, these songs came out and I loved them, but I couldn't write them. I couldn't write them. I just wrote Too cheesy or? Uh, it was just not as good, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, there were some classic But they work that, in that era, they work. Well, you know, like uh, they were amazing. Uh, no, house love, that was some great house yeah. stuff. You know, even the noughties with I Like to Party and uh, yeah. Love and, you know, all that uh, Mojo Lady, you know, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I tried and I, I just, where I was artistically, I just, I could, I, I could, you know, I articulate what I loved about it, but I couldn't create it to that level, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying that I can do it's that now, tracks. but it's a, lot, it's, it's a lot easier for me to kind of express myself now. And that's just fine now, you know? What, what do you, and how do you feel about like writing, like, do you ever do anything that's kind of like completely nonfiction, like a character from a book? Do you ever like pick just like a random topic or is it just like, what's the kind of thoughts on that? Because I know like some other styles of music, like they'll just create a, create a person create a character and write a story about them maybe not as relevant for kind of pop, uh house but maybe in pop country that sort of styles of music Rock. yeah I, I think certain genres have have i mean you know uh certain guidelines that sometimes it's good to, to just be aware of like with house music it's about you and me it's about love you know what i mean a lot, a lot of the time especially if you're talking about the big diva or the funkier stuff it's not a description of something, you know? You can't get too descriptive. Although, you know, a lot of uh, indie vocals, you know, have, you know, really worked in the, in the house kind of vibe as well. So, um, you know, I, I find certain genres, you don't want to write a pop song over a house track. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, otherwise it just sounds like a house remix of a pop song. <laughs> 
nothing wrong yeah. with that, but you know, it might not be hitting kind of the demographic you're looking for, you know? Do you, so do you reckon people kind of need to stick with certain guidelines to make it big? Or do you reckon maybe there's going to be like a, cause I've been thinking about it myself, like what's going to be next, you know, what's the next big style? Do you think it's going to be a random cross of like country and house or like, I mean, Avicii kind of did it, didn't he? It could be, it could be. And I think it's all about thinking outside the box and not try like, you know, if you're into defected and listening to what they're releasing right now, you know, keep bear in mind that, you know, by the time you do something in three or four months, they, you know, that, that ship may have sailed and something, you know, else is in. So, um, you know, it's, um, there's certain styles, certain certain kind of uh, genres that uh, you know, a traditional house diva piano track that that'll never change. There, there'll always be a vibe for that. You know what I mean? But yeah. then you have something like Camel Fat that came in with Polar a few years ago with a massive hit. You know, and that was again the yeah. vocal with the house with the tech beat. You know, and that was yeah. Cool. For sure. I remember the first time I heard something like that was Deep Dish Flash Dance. Do you remember? That? Yeah. Yeah, and course. that was the first time I personally heard an indie vocal with a dance beat. And yeah, I thought, this is special. This is to this yeah. day, like, you know? uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I think that, that's what what needs to happen next. Like, we've had we've heard a million covers, we've heard a million sampled stuff, kind of it, you know, that cola is the last really massive, massive blowing in the you know, the roof of the world dance track from memory really like yeah. it's absolutely just you know just hit the world kind of like that you haven't really heard anything like that since no no you haven't and uh and, and that's the beauty of people just doing their thing and uh, uh, at some point something connects on a major level you know and that's what excites me about it. i mean you look at someone like mk who i mean i've, I've always admired I've, I've always been a big fan of his um he's he's like later stuff now is getting more commercial but it's still his yeah. kind of uh, piano and stuff. But, you know, 909 drums. Well, 17 or uh, 2 a.m. I mean, yeah. they're, they're great yeah, commercial beautiful. records, you know? So, I mean, I love yeah. Actually, that. I think oh. Camel Fat were part, part of the writing process of seven, uh, 17, I think, as well, if you look at the credits. Were they? Okay. Yeah. 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 Not Maybe they read it, wrote it with him or wrote it and it was too poppy for them. But I guess <laughs> that's probably that same thing in writing vocals. And if it doesn't quite suit you, you can use it for someone else. I heard that that was a demo, though. That, uh, that, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, maybe they were involved in the production process. But the, 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 yeah. the song, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the song was actually a demo that the, the artist had recorded and, and wow. they just wrote his magic on it. Um, Man, such a nice melody. I love that track. Yeah, it's great. I mean, and you know, for, for me as a writer, I, I obviously kind of look at the, the situation now and I, I love club tracks. I love commercial tracks. I love commercial club tracks. I think Helton Harris has always been a big inspiration for me that you yeah. can have something that's commercial, but there's still a club sensibility about it, whether it's yeah. the production or the lyrical content or, you know, um, that's the kind of pop I love, you know? Yeah, definitely. 100%. Um, I probably don't listen to enough, but with the stuff that I do here, yeah, the, that, that housey stuff, that's they're my favourite ones, <laughs> the Calvin Harris, the MKs. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you hear a track that goes off internationally uh, and it's a yeah. dance track, but someone knows, someone is from the, from the club world and there's a club aspect to it, there's, a, there's an edge to it, and I, I love that, you know. Um, it doesn't have to be cheesy to be connected, you know. Um, do you kind of like wonder where things are going to go or are you just like, I'm writing music, I just write what I love and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing? Um, I, I, I always kind of look at what's going on. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's this kind of situation, clubs are closed, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of probably just focusing, I mean, I've always done more crossover kind of stuff anyway, um, when you're talking with melodies and, and, and vocalists and stuff, but uh, um, I just kind of feel I try to make what I'm not hearing, you know, what I want to hear more of. You know? Yeah. So, uh, what's, what's kind of missing? Create what's well, missing from yeah. the. Well, I, I guess yeah. the longer you do it, the more your canvas of, of, uh, of cycles in music you can, you can, yeah. Get to. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know, man. I just say, uh, also, we're talking about house stuff as well. It's kind of time yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Soul, soulful stuff doesn't date 
Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. And you had that um, release as well with uh, Ronnie Boswell on Defected. Is that some, that's probably that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah, that was the first top line we did for, for Defected. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, it turned out that was just a, a one session, maybe. Yeah, one session. Yeah, it was good. It was fun. Yeah, and is it's that like, go, you know? So you it's, just, it's, it's good. does everything you make just get pitched to them first then now? <laughs> No, sometimes you look. Sometimes uh, you get stuff that's on hold. Uh, I had a track on uh, on hold by a really um, big international artist for two years, and they actually paid us to have it on hold, which is great, you know. Wow! Um, but how uh, does that work? So they're just like, we don't know if we want it, but we're going to pay you to not give it to anyone else. Yeah. And wow. There's, there's a there's a time limit on it, um, and. Uh, if that went through, dude, that would have been a game changer for me. But unfortunately, it didn't. Wow. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, and, but that's the game, you know. And, and, and What's the label got to lose by not putting it out? Like, sometimes I get these great tracks and I'm like, I just, why, why wouldn't I put this out, do you know? <laughs> like, uh, I feel like. That, they have, when you're talking about a, a, an artist uh, of, of, of that color, they, they have access to uh, uh, that much material, you know. So it's like a management call for the artist, maybe rather than the label or something like that. Um, possibly, I I, I, I yeah. don't really know the specifics, but for me, I would have needed about twelve of those on hold to kind of justify that model. You know what I mean? Because mm. uh, um, it's you know, um, you know uh, a part of me says, well, I'd love to create an act with this song, then if that's the case, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the produ the producer and the A and R guy and me saying, okay. You can play the um, the pitch the song international route, but there's no there's no guarantees with that, and it's a long game. It, it really is. We've got a, it's a lot of luck question, involved, and a lot of gatekeepers as well. You know? Yeah, that's what we've got to play by our own rules and do our own labels. <laughs> got a question well, from I, Arden I, I here. Feel... Um, should you regularly? Oh, go on. No, no, sorry. I think there's a lag. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my terrible country internet. Um, should you regularly branch out as an artist, songwriter, producer and cross over into other genres or instead of kind of like pigeonholing yourself into one vibe? Um, that's, that's a really personal kind of choice, I think, if, 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 if that's who you are. So I, I, uh, I can tell very early on with a lot of producers that they're going to be top liners as well. Yeah. They're really interested in the whole vocal concept and the whole lyrics and how vocals work and they ask the right questions and um but they're still getting their heads around production and stuff so it's something that'll come later down the track i mean actually when i met don dollar he was like dude i said dude you don't need me <laughs> <laughs> you don't need me and uh clearly he didn't <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can just tell. You can just tell when someone's gifted in that respect. And, and, and I try to encourage that. I said, seriously, if you want to learn about vocals, learn about vocals. Because you want to, not, not as a strategic move. You know? And so if someone did want to learn about vocals, where would you, where would they start? Um, I think probably kind of um, doing some kind of internship. Uh, I know like, you know, in Sydney, in here in Sydney, like somewhere like 301, has, yeah, has an internship, or you know, hit up someone like me if you want to just be bored and, and see how a process works and stuff. Um, just I think the best way to learn is in the studio. If you want to be, if you yeah. want to be a songwriter, and if you want to work with singers, the best way to learn is in the studio. So just basically yeah. just giving it a crack and yeah, and that's why I say with like with singers with with, with my artist development pro, uh, process, you're in the hot seat. You're writing a track, and we have to write a track that we feel needs to be a single. So when you're starting out, that can be quite intimidating. But I navigate it, and the more that we do, the less, the more of a step back I take, you know. But songwriting is something that uh, that that can take a lot of time, or it can it can happen overnight. It just it really depends on on your natural aptitude and uh, and your motivation and your uh, your work ethic. Yeah. Have you had any classic moments? Like, you, you know, you hear about Paul McCartney's yesterday coming from a dream. Have you had any big ideas? Like you've woken up and you've had to just record something into your phone? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, no, yesterday is damn it. No, 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 Sometimes when I'm out shopping and I, or, or I'm out in a public place or at the gym or something like that, and then an idea comes and I thought the, the opportunity cost of forgetting that idea and looking like a complete wanker singing into your phone in front of, in front of people, it's like, I'll, I'll look like a wanker. I might have a great, a great thing here. So, you know. Um, so anyway, you record straight in the, the vegetable aisle. <laughs> Fresh I produce. produce. I've been really <laughs> yesterday. I, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, cool. Is anyone uh, online? Any of you guys have any questions you wanted to ask? You can shut yourselves off mute. I know Ryan Harper's here. You're a, you're a you're a vocalist. You're top line Yo. on your tracks. <laughs> I got a I got a question. Man? Good. I got a question for the big boy. Oh, yeah. Good. Have you uh, have you finished the studio? Does it look pimping? <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I I'm still yet to build the booth. That's happening at the end of the month. So uh, it's been a bit of a of a. Uh, of a challenge to get, getting everything ready and getting the right kind of people. Um, I got a few quotes and stuff and then timing issues and stuff like that. So yeah, to answer your question at the end of the month, I'll have a vote of it. It'll be pimping. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, you'll be in there recording vocals soon, right? Yeah, I've got a few for him lined up. It's waiting for some uh, COVID, <laughs> COVID payments to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but isn't it funny? What, I've worked with both of you and you both have, you know, a, a really, you're hungry. There's a work ethic there. You're both really, you know, you're constantly at it. And, and that, that inspires me. I love working with guys like that, you know. Uh, it's, um, you want people that are hungry. You want to work with people that want the same thing. And that, that, that motivates you as well. Cheers, brother. You too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate that. No, it's been great. And that's another thing actually that I should mention is like, you know, we've had tracks like Come With Me where you've um, recorded uh, a cover for us and that's been yeah. really successful. That was, that and was that fun. was amazing. Like <laughs> that sounded better than the actual 90s track, uh, which was just unbelievable to us. That was so good. Was it, you that, asked me, was was it you that asked me, uh, uh, is that, are you absolutely sure you, that the original vocal is not in there at all? I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I. Yeah, yeah. But Unreal. I enjoyed it. So you, what's your thoughts on covers? You, you'd like kind of, is it just another piece of the pie for you? Is it another bit of work or you do enjoy doing those sort of things as well? Um, I think the producer in me enjoys that. Obviously the songwriter in me doesn't, <laughs> but um, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's an art form to doing a great cover. And um, for every one cover that is a massive hit, there are thousands that don't work, you know? Yeah. Um, but um, I, um, I, I enjoy, we did, uh, we did, uh, last cover I did was a uh, project I did with Matt Sofa. We signed to Sony and uh, it was a cover of Teardrops. Remember Way Back in Women? Yeah. Didn't do much, but it went like 2 million spins for a project that had no push or no, 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 no face or nothing like that, you know. And, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed that process. I, 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 I want to do, actually, I've got some ideas for covers as well for the label. So I'm um, keen to get back into that as well. Is that something that could be a money maker? Like, you know, you go every time you go to Bali, not that Bali are probably paying many royalties, but, you know, you sit by the pool and there's like an acoustic version of every fucking song ever made. <laughs> Is that like a good money maker? Well, I think in, 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 in this streaming kind of environment now, the, the share of the MasterCard is more valuable almost in the publishing because publishing doesn't make as much from streaming as, as, as owning a MasterCard. So uh, if you have yeah. a cover that's a, that's a hit and getting, you know, 80, 100 million spins, it's quite profitable. It can be quite profitable. But you need, you know, you need permission so that to the territories, you need publishers' uh, approval. Uh, to release it, yeah, so it can be quite um, quite a detailed process. So is that because like the radio radio play and that sort of thing is getting you your publishing payment, and obviously Spotify is all mechanical. That's just going to the record label. Yeah, I mean you make you you, you get mechanicals for, uh, from publishing on on streaming, but uh, yeah, yep. ma master cuts are, are more. Yeah, it's a radio play. Uh, used to be club play, uh, and. Um, <laughs> And, um, you know, syncing uh, on ads, um, movies, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, the great thing with publishing is uh, your back catalogue just keeps keeps ticking away. You know. How many? Uh, how many? I was trying to check. You know when you can usually put your um, song songs into your LPRs like performance reports. You can just put someone's name in and you can see all the songs they've written. But the system's down at the moment. I wanted to go and do a sneaky check of how many tracks you were uh, you're okay. a writer on, but I couldn't. <laughs> how many have you got in there registered in APRA? I should check. I haven't checked yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, because you've got a publisher. So they do everything for you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I should check, but uh, I wouldn't. I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few. Well, we, yeah, it, it's it's it, it's great. Like again, nothing gets wasted. I think last year we uh, I um, we signed a track to a Chinese artist that I wrote in 1998. <laughs> Wow, and, and it started and, coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, and again, you know, it's uh, it's just sitting in your heart disk doing nothing. So uh, you know, um, and because China is a specific kind of market, they actually advance the royalties because you're not really going to make royalties from um, from uh, from streaming there. So, uh, just, uh, oh wow. It's the way, well, it was at that stage. It's probably it may have changed now. I'm not sure, but yeah. So you get an advance and stuff like that. So yeah, the the, uh, the back catalog uh, always keeps ticking, which is great. Yeah. All right. Going to go try and get some Chinese sync deals. No, well, why not, dude? <laughs> it's there. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, cool. Well, well dude, thanks uh, heaps for joining us. Um, has anyone got any other questions? Anybody out there? No, that's good. I think we covered just about everything that's possible. Um, I'll chuck some links. So the best way for people to contact you is via email. So maybe I'll just chuck a link in there where people can inbox if they want to get a hold of you and I can send them your email address or something like that. Or um, maybe people can even just chuck some stuff into the Facebook group uh, or even message to me and I can pass it along if they've got some um, demos that they need some vocals for. Um, and obviously a brief to go along with it's great as well. Um, okay. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> Beauty. Mate, thanks so much again. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for joining yeah. in as well. Absolute pleasure. Legend. Thanks, All right, well, I'll chat. Good luck with the rest of the studio, and I'll chat to you soon. Thanks, mate. You too. Hey, guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Make sure you do hit subscribe and turn the notifications on so you're going to get notified every time we upload a video. We're doing a minimum of two a week, sometimes three, covering all bases in the industry from mental health, production tips, interviewing, DJs. We're going to go deep, 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 covering all bases, get you all the information you need. Hopefully some of it is useful and there's not too much of me talking shit. <laughs>